Hello everybody, George Taylor from On Track Audio here. Uh, today we're going to talk about damping factor. Now, the reason I do some of these videos is because I have customers coming in asking about different measurements, different attributes of amplifiers that they, that they want to buy and they hear terms like damping factor and signal to noise ratio. Uh, among others and I think it's good to talk about what some of these terms mean and how they apply to what you're buying or what you're listening to or what you already own I mean you know some of this is just advice because let's face it sometimes from a from your local audio dealer you just need advice you don't need to buy equipment every week so damping factor okay damping factor is actually a real thing it's not a made-up marketing term it's not something that can't be measured and then equated to performance they, it, it does have it does have real performance parameters um, so today we want to go which is better high damping factor or low damping factor I'll use the magic wand here because I have one which is better high damping factor or low damping factor tubes versus solid state as that relates to damping factor Associated sources, speaker matching, basically all the things that are around your amplifier that may have an effect on the sound that sounds like it's acting like damping factor, but it's not. First of all, what is damping factor? Damping factor is actually a measurement. It is, well, it's a ratio, I guess. It's the impedance of the speaker divided by the impedance of the amplifier output, and we assume that the speaker impedance is 8 ohms. We use that as a constant. Now, there's our first problem because as we know, not all speakers are 8 ohms and that changes even more so during, during the times that the speaker is under load playing music. So this is sort of a constant number that is used, but it may or may not, it may or may not be a real accurate description of what's going on with your speaker, okay? What does damping factor indicate? Damping factor is a value that indicates how much control an amplifier exerts on the woofer. So, does it stop it from flapping? Does it stop it from, from pushing too much? Okay. And solid state amplifiers usually have a high damping factor that's greater to or equal to greater greater than or equal to 80. Um, and the usual output impedance of a solid state amplifier is about 0.1 ohms and this gives you more woofer control this gives you what is called tighter and punchier bass so a little bit more forceful um, a little bit more aggressive now tube amplifiers a little bit different they have depending on the amplifier well no all tube amplifiers have a relatively low damping factor usually between 2 and 20 um, the most usual range of output impedance on a tube amplifier is 0.5 ohms to 2 ohms and this tends to give you a looser founder base. Now there's two things I want to talk about here. First of all the term looser. That tends to be taken as a negative term and I'm not sure that looser and fatter should be a negative term. I mean not every speaker you're running has a 10 inch woofer or a 12 inch woofer. <clears throat> Sometimes if you've got a four inch woofer, a six inch woofer, maybe you want a slightly looser bass because the small size of the speaker is tightening up the bass on its own anyhow. So two amps are not to be, I mean, if we assume that, if we assume that looser fatter bass is a bad thing, then we also assume that every tube amp ever made is a bad amplifier. And that's just not the case. Okay, there are all sorts of good sounding tube amplifiers. So I don't know I don't know a better way to describe this is this is how the industry describes these terms. There's I think there's probably there's there's probably rounder bass would probably be a better way to describe it because it's not necessarily loose, it's not necessarily unpleasant to listen to, and it's not less necessarily uncharacter of the, uncharacteristic of the music that you're listening to. So we have to be careful of taking this as negative things because they, they may not be. Um, we, can, we can alter the sound of, 
of amplifiers by using hybrids, right? We can use, there's all sorts of hybrids. We can use a tube input with a solid state output stage in an amplifier. We can use a solid state input with a tube output stage in an amplifier. We can use a tube preamplifier and a solid state power amplifier and vice versa. We can use uh, some of the nicest, actually some really nice combinations come from what you would think would be um, not s such a common thing, but a solid state preamplifier with a tube amplifier. Um, that can sound really, really, really good. So, but what you have to remember is that even though you're changing the sound, like uh, I've used a combination, for example, of an ATC SCA2 solid state preamplifier with a pair of audio valve um, 150 watt monoblock tube amplifiers. And though that does definitely tighten up the bass and provide a little bit more punch, when you do that, you're not changing the damping factor of the output of the amplifier, you're just you're changing the input tone to the power output stage. So there's ways that we can control this without worrying too much about damping factor. Um, Speaker, this is a big one. For me, this is this is an incredibly important topic here. The speaker impedance variation when you're playing music. I mean, we assume a value of 8 ohms when we're calculating damping factor, right? But when, when you're playing music, speakers fluctuate up and down, some more radically than others. So your damping factor is changing all the time. And different different frequencies have different optimum damping factors, right? Uh, different frequencies have different damping factors during the performance of the music and within that, within the range of the, of the frequency output of the speaker, different frequencies have different damping factors. So point being that you may think that your speaker requires a high damping factor from an amplifier when it may not, okay? Now, why do we get, why do we worry about damping factor? Well, there is some truth to the fact that if you're using big speakers all the time and huge wattage amplifiers, like we're talking about pro audio shows now, there's a chance that um, if you don't control woofers properly, if you, and, and we're talking about 15 inch, 18 inch woofers, like big massive woofers with big massive motors you can cause an inductance problem that will fry an amplifier, right? This is, this is a true thing, but I think we have to remember that in our system, in our, in our listening room, in our office, in our basement, wherever it is, we're not, for the most part, we're not using that kind of power. We're not using that size of speaker and having to control the woofer in an overly aggressive way just may not be appropriate to the making of really good music. Okay, I mean there are lots of peeper, lots of peepers. Sorry, sorry peepers. Didn't mean to. Uh, didn't mean to call you out there. There are lots of people that are using louder speakers with three, five, eight watts per channel of amplification that really like the sound of that, and the damping factors of those tube amplifiers are tiny. Okay, very, very, very low damping factors, and they still sound good. So it's about taste. It's about choosing your music, it's about choosing your system, and most of all, please, 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 guys, please, 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 girls, please, 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 whoever's out there, you can't use damping factor to judge if one amplifier will sound better than another amplifier. You have got to listen, okay? Do your best to get out somewhere where you can listen to the amplifier, where you can listen to speakers that are maybe like yours, or maybe get a home demo, or maybe bring your amplifier to a dealer, or maybe do what you've got to do, but you Please, you have got to listen, okay? So thank you for your time today. Um, always, a pleasure to, uh, always a pleasure to try and help educate. If you've got questions, I'm going over here to Mr. Speaker, who is my helper here today. If you have questions, please, I'm going to use the uh, wavy stick again. My, uh, my website is www.ontrackaudio.com. My email is ontrackedaudio at rogers.com if you've got questions. Um, as always, we feature Angela Gilbert Young Gear, so if you've got questions about that, because the next video you see will be about experiments with damping factor, and you may have questions, so 
You can go here and you can render email questions through the website www.angela-gilbert.com. Hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great day. I got to debut the pointy stick today. I'm sure this will come in very handy if I can remember to use it instead of just pointing at things. Take care. Have a good one.